from writing software to sophisticated programming to call centers. Can I have your card number, please? Computers have become the lifeblood of India's new economy, even defective computers. At this company, machines returned by customers are methodically diagnosed and repaired, business that would be unfeasible in higher wage countries. Even in computers not repairable, there's plenty of value. Most of the connectors are gold-plated, and gold can be retrieved from them. The microprocessor and the BGA chips also have gold-plated uh, contacts. In addition, we have the copper coils, the metal pieces, the aluminum heat sinks. The aluminum can be recycled. And recycling these metals has spawned a fast-growing and alarming new industry. Computer motherboards are literally cooked, which releases gold and copper, but also arsenic, mercury, lead, and other toxins. These pictures were taken by the environmental group Greenpeace. Spokesman Ramapati Kumar says up to five million people work in this clandestine backyard trade. The recycling is a, is a highly dangerous say, like in India because the, the operation and the procedures is still very primitive. There are no personal protective equipment or the safety mechanism in place. And they are recycling just with a bare hand. They have no protection at all. Greenpeace estimates that some 50,000 tons of e-waste are produced in India, that is computers and other hardware, discarded as obsolete. But a much larger amount, harder to pin down because it's illegal, is imported from rich countries where Delhi activist Ravi Agarwal says recycling is much costlier. It can cost uh, 20 to 30 uh, uh, dollars to dispose of one computer, just to throw it away in a proper way. Now instead of that, if you then export the waste to a poor developing country in Africa, China or India, you can actually make money off that waste. So a trader will, instead of paying $20 to the local authority to recycle the waste, can actually sell the waste, a computer, for $13 to $15. And the person who buys it will then bring it to a place like India and auction it off uh, and make you know, about $10 for it. International treaties prohibit the export of obsolete computer hardware from developed to developing countries. But there are loopholes. The stuff is shipped to intermediate points, where shipping labels are changed to hide the real point of origin. Other shipments are disguised as charitable contributions. One can import a computer for charity work, so therefore it is coming in the name of charity. Greenpeace's Kumar says recyclers have resisted attempts to tighten India's laws governing scrap imports. Also, Indian lawmakers worry about jeopardizing the jobs of some of the country's poorest people. In the scrap mafia is very strong in this country, and they have blocked uh, many, many things uh, as far as to tackle the issue of the dumping of uh, 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 toxic waste in this country. The other debate in this country that is always be there is that um, livelihood issue. Uh, in this country, uh, environment uh, is an important issue, but it's not a priority. So, so livelihood becomes a priority and basically, you know, uh, takes a lead on all of our other issues, including the toxic waste. Ironically, neither the poverty nor the environmental damage associated with recycling are necessary. In the Muslim district of Bangalore, India's high-tech capital, Syed Hussain runs a business, Ash Recyclers, that's approved and recognized by the government for safe practices. He says he's very profitable. We didn't have food to eat before, he says. Now, with God's graces, I'm worth crores, the Indian equivalent of millionaire status. When the scientist Sahib came here, we used to be afraid of government regulations. He told us how to do it properly. He said, don't worry. He told us how we could comply with the rules, how we should do this work in a disciplined way. The scientist Sahib he speaks about is Srinivas Shetty. It's an unlikely partnership of an eccentric, well-to-do Hindu engineer and a Muslim junk dealer. Shetty helped Hussein develop and use clean recycling technology. But the goal is much more to reuse than recycle. Computers may get obsolete quickly in Bangalore's IT companies, he says, but for most others, there's solid demand for used or repaired machines.
So much of what would otherwise become electronic waste has now been carefully stocked in an inventory of spare parts. See, these are the boards which are as good as new. This is will cost you only about 50 rupees. That's a dollar. You can't get it manufactured in India or even in China also for one dollar. And it's entirely usable. Yeah, entirely reusable. Elsewhere in the building, cathode ray tubes, laden with toxic components, are rebuilt instead of crushed. Many are turned into television sets, sold far more cheaply than new ones to rural customers who could not otherwise afford them. How long can you recycle a tube like this? I think actually two to three times you can definitely recycle like this. So this thing can go on beaming television signals for until the yes. next two decades? Yes, definitely. Using his profits, Syed Hussein started a foundation that provides rebuilt machines to area schools. Most schools in India don't have computers. Our Quran hasn't changed in size. It can still be put on a Pentium 1, Pentium 2, or even an old 386 machine. The children can read the Quran. They don't need an upgrade to learn to read and write. The scientist Sahib says, we can give it to all the schools. Those learning the Ramayana, we can give it to them. We can give it to churches. Ash Recyclers conducts its own school for neighborhood recyclers with whom it does business, showing them how to properly dismantle electronic equipment. The only argument anyone has with companies like Ash Recyclers is there aren't enough of them. Ash is comprising of about 10, 15 recyclers only. How many are there in Bangalore? How many? Over 1,000. We need about 100 Ash to bring everything into our... 100 companies like Ash Recyclers? Yes, yes. Dr. Tupil Venkatesh, a professor of biochemistry and biophysics at St. John's Medical Center in Bangalore, headed campaigns against lead pollution. About five years ago, gasoline probably was the major contributor. Now we have unleaded gasoline. Now the gasoline is not the major contributor. But the recycling of electronic waste is on rise. That is becoming a major contributor. I think in another four or five years, if no action is taken, we will have major contributor for the environmental pollution and especially lead from the electronic e-waste recycling. In recent months, major computer and cell phone manufacturers have pledged to make so-called green machines, more easily recycled and with fewer toxins. But there will still be a lot of old machines coming to Bangalore and other Indian cities. And for people in rich countries who are asked to donate their old computers, Dr. Venkatesh has a plea. My sincere request to people from the developed world like US, please do not donate any electronic goods to the developing world. Don't send your old computer. Please, please don't send. To charity. Don't, no charity. You, you, by, the, by this kind of charity, you're killing the children. Please don't do that. As it is, he says, 53% of children under 12 in India cities are lead poisoned meaning permanent brain damage that claims up to 20% of a child's IQ, the very brain power that has taken this country into the information technology age. <laughs>